Our acoustic instruments transmit a pulse of acoustic energy and then listen for any returning energy that is scattered back to the receiver after having been bounced off of any objects that are out there, such as schools of fish or the seafloor itself. The returned acoustic energy is called backscatter, or the energy we transmitted that was then scattered back to us. Backscatter is in essence what our acoustic systems measure as a function of time after the transmit pulse was sent out, but with the addition of noise from unwanted sources. This additional noise is an important part of the story, because it is part of what we measure. We cannot measure backscatter without the noise, so it all becomes one measurement. The most intuitive use of backscatter by hydrographers is through side-scan sonar. Side-scan sonars measure backscatter as a function of time for each ping. The backscattered acoustic energy is then drawn as a grayscale or colored image where each line in the image is a ping, and the lights and darks in the image are the backscatter strength. But because side scan does not contain location information, there is limited post-processing that can be done to make the backscatter into other products than the simple image. NOAA field units are equipped with multi-beam systems capable of collecting backscatter and sometimes water column data that gives you precise positioning along with your backscatter image. The data we typically term water column data are simply all of the acoustic backscatter as measured by the echo sounder. But in some communities, backscatter is often used loosely to mean specifically the seafloor backscatter. This is the backscatter from around the bottom detection, conveying information about the acoustic hardness of the seafloor. Acoustic hardness is of particular interest to people that want to understand the nature of the seafloor, such as marine geologists or those that want to determine the suitability of a marine habitat for different kinds of marine life. So let's dive into some of these concepts to get a good understanding of how this all works. Hydrographers are concerned with finding out where the bottom really is. It just so happens that backscatter is where bottom detections come from. Bottom detections generally trigger off of high amplitude backscatter, meaning that where there is a lot of energy returned from the transmit pulse, you find the most likely candidate for the sea floor. The travel time to that location of high backscatter is then turned into a range and ultimately a depth. Since bottom detections are what we use for measuring depth, they're ultimately a fundamental part of the soundings we put on the charts. The strength of the backscatter can also be useful. Like I mentioned before, the seafloor is usually assumed to be the strongest backscatter out there. That's because it's big, but it's also because of what we will call its change in acoustic hardness. The greater the change in acoustic hardness, the more energy that will be reflected from a surface. When you go from water to mud, that's a moderately big change. But going from water to rock, well, that's a huge change in hardness. This means that the backscatter strength can provide information about the properties of an object, whether it's a school of fish, seeps of gas coming from the seafloor, or the seafloor itself. The recorded backscatter is influenced by more than just acoustic hardness. It's also changed as a result of the sonar itself. If more energy is transmitted by turning up the transmit power, more energy will also be scattered back and measured by the receiver. Turning up the gain on the echo sounder boosts quiet sounds, also influencing the value recorded. So you can see that the power and gain settings we operate have a big effect on backscatter. What isn't so obvious is the fact that our multi-beams often don't record the actual power and gain settings very accurately. If you're interested in backing out the settings you use, and you don't have a good record for these settings, you'll have a hard time determining the actual backscatter strength of an object. Our backscatter measurements are also influenced by the environment, and these environmental effects need to be known to get back to the actual backscatter strength of an object. If energy is lost either off in another direction or through interacting with some object that's in the way, that will decrease the amount of backscattered energy measured. We cannot measure the energy that is lost, so sometimes backscatter is analyzed as a function of incidence angle, or the angle between the beam and the sea floor. By looking at the relative change in backscatter across the swath, and therefore at different incidence angles, more information about the sea floor is gained beyond the directly measured backscatter. Water also absorbs some of the acoustic energy, 
and so estimating the absorption from a CTD cast is very important. Estimating the water column absorption means we can estimate the amount of energy lost while the sound travels to and from the object. Small bubbles or schools of fish can have the same effect, but are much harder to estimate. So we've talked a little bit about what backscatter is, and some of the things you need to consider in order to get good backscatter. We've also talked about products of backscatter, like bottom detections and side scan sonar. But how do we balance backscatter and bathymetry? Do we need to set up the sonar differently for each product? What are the important elements to backscatter acquisition? Well, find out next time in part two of this module series. Thanks for watching and good luck out there.